AM 630. We'd have IEDs go off, you know, virtually every day, but they were going off in front of the trucks. They were blowing up mine rollers. They are blowing up on the side of the road. Um, following his disappearance, IEDs started going off directly under the trucks. They are getting perfect hits every time. Their ambushes were very calculated, very methodical, like they knew what we were going to do. Just one of many bombshell revelations revealed on CNN, the lead, just an hour ago. That was U.S. Army Sergeant Evan Butow, and interviewing him with that scoop was Jake Tapper, who joins us right now. Uh, Jake, first of all, great scoop, great interview. We were all transfixed here watching it. Uh, tell me, first of all, uh, about Sergeant Buto, what his role was in the platoon with uh, Army Sergeant and former POW or, or hostage, depending on who's talking, uh, uh, Bo Bergdahl. Uh, Evan Buto was uh, the team leader, so he knew Bo Bergdahl very well. Uh, they were in the same squad, not just the same platoon or company. Uh, and he was there on the observation post that night, uh, when um, Bergdahl disappeared. And, uh, you know, I think his is an important voice. Um, I should say that there's a lot of people out there who seem to be trying to um, politicize this story, both on the left and the right. People um, attacking Obama over, over, you know, what Bergdahl is alleged to have done, and people attacking these soldiers who are telling their stories um, about Bergdahl uh, and I, re I really find it very uh, dishonorable to be doing that. Uh, this is this is the story of, of what happens in war, and one man's story, and the story of other soldiers who are who are just trying to not be political and just and just describe why they don't think there should be a hero's welcome for Bo Bergdahl and. Uh, you know, I, I think that's an important story. Yeah, and, and I have to say, uh, Evan Butow comes across so, uh, your guest earlier today, he came across so genuine in that respect. You even asked him a question that could potentially have been politically charged, and he went out of his way to avoid the, the political aspect. He was speaking yeah, as I just, a I asked him what he thought. I mean, look, the, 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 the President Obama and his team make, make an argument that it doesn't matter the circumstances. You try to get back every American soldier. I think that there are very few people who probably disagree with that. Uh, it is, you know, that, that is an American imperative, an American military imperative of, of leave no man behind. Um, I asked him about it, what he thought, and he wouldn't even touch that uh, because these guys. Uh, and I know that there there is a Republican operative who is uh, pro bono offering his firm to help book them on shows and stuff. It had nothing to do with with my show or my booking, but. Um, be that as it may, uh, you know, I, I think that, that what they're saying is an important part of the story. And I don't discern any political agenda at all when I talk to at least the ones I've talked to so far. And, and Jake Tepper, I think you've covered the Afghanistan war. Of course, your book, The Outpost, uh, I think it was it got such... Uh, it gave you such credibility as a reporter and as a journalist covering that war and covering the soldiers who were actually in a in a area very similar to where Bo Bergdahl uh, uh, walked away from his post, according to your interview earlier today. I, I, I want to ask you, the fact that so many of these soldiers have come to you and you have been able to interview them and you've been able to be sort of the lead journalist uh, on this story since Sunday afternoon, uh, when you find out that they were asked or, or in some cases uh, – pushed to sign non-disclosure agreements. How did that strike you? Have you heard of that before? I've never heard of that before. I mean, I can certainly understand um, soldiers being, you know, told early on in their rotation, in their, in their deployment, don't, you know, don't talk to the media uh, unless there's a public uh, information officer. That, that general guidance is not new or, or strange. But this idea of uh, these soldiers being asked to sign NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, not just the ones who were there with Bergdahl uh, at the observation post that day, but uh, ones who engaged in the search over the following weeks and months. I've, I've never, I've never heard anything like it. I asked the Pentagon why, uh, and I have not gotten an answer back. But I've heard, I've heard it now from. Um, and let's see, I, I mean, I've interviewed about 15, 20 of these soldiers. I've heard it now from almost every one of them. So. Uh, I I, I don't understand it. Uh, Jake Tapper, also, uh, there was. I, I want to play back another part of the interview here that I thought was uh, uh, really vivid. Here, listen, listen up. I was standing right next to the radio um, when they heard that there's an American in a village called Yaya Kale. 
which was about two miles from where we were at. Um, and it, it, it's a village that has a very, very large presence of Taliban. Um, that there's the American is in Yahya Kale. He's looking for someone who speaks English so he can talk to the Taliban. Well, what do you think the relevance of that is? That's a revelation. I don't think anyone's heard that before. Well, it's an explosive charge. I mean, it is chatter. So we should we should say that not all Taliban chatter is factual. Mm. Um, but this uh, this was something that that really I, I, I was stunned when uh, I heard it. Um, and he had heard it. Uh, Evan, who was on my show, had heard it directly from the translator listening in the fall, you know, the day or two after Bergdahl disappeared. Now, keep in mind uh, that could be it could be uh, false information from the Taliban. It could be incorrect information from the Taliban. It could be that Bill Bergdahl was um, looking to try to make peace with the Taliban. I, you know, w- w- I don't know the credibility of what the interpreter heard and i don't know if it is true what the reason is. right Th- that said it is uh yet another mystery in this story that is baffling uh, that, and that we've never really gotten a full explanation from the military about yeah and J- jake listen it is an amazing story and we when you when we hear these revelations and then couple it with the fact that this exchange took place and five high-level taliban had been released uh, uh from gitmo it just there's so many layers to it and and you're as a journalist you're it perfectly poised to continue to uh, bring us these stories and we appreciate it very much thanks for joining us